Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to continue our series on Don't Do This. These are photos that people have submitted, their room forms. We're going to use them as a teaching tool. We're not trying to, you know, be critical against anyone, but there's a lot of things that people do wrong, and I think these photos are a great way to help us, you know, with our own systems and figure out what's wrong. So in this first picture here, the first thing we see is, is speakers directly against the wall. And that's never a good idea. Think of a speaker as an energy source. Now the energy source, think of that speaker as radiating energy from its top, bottom, sides. Why would you put an energy source that's radiating energy in multiple directions directly against a room boundary surface. You wouldn't. So you always want to keep your speakers away from walls. So four feet is a good start distance. Obviously, it will vary with the size of your room, but bottom line is keep them away from the walls. Now, look at what we have on this right channel also. We have a glass window with a door, and then we have a corner. Then we have a table with a lamp on it. So what chance does that primary reflection have of coming back, you know, uninhibited without things that are going to bother it? Tables are horrible because energy gets underneath them and it starts to get trapped and resonate. So we want clear sound fields between our speakers in our listening position. So that's our goal here. We want to get to the point where we have everything in free space, sort of. We don't have obstacles. Now, I get it. Some rooms are limited. You're living and listening in the same room. But you have to adhere to certain stereophonic reproduction principles if you're going to get the most out of your system. And then we have it, the speaker right next to a turntable. Never a good idea to put an energy source next to a turntable. Why is that? Well, energy produces vibrations. The turntable starts to vibrate and the stylus starts to move. And one can see that, you know, <laughs> that's just going to be ripe for all kinds of, you know, distortion. So I think this is a good example of, of what not to do here. So we don't want to contribute to the problem. We want to make the problem better, right? All right. So let's look at another picture here. We see more attention paid to the presentation of speakers and equipment than we do the sound quality. First thing that jumps out in this photo, obviously, is the glass sidewall. Now, this is just absolutely horrible. Glass is the worst surface that you can have in any room. So we don't want to have that situation occurring at all. The gear is good. It's sitting between the speakers. Looks like it's on some type of granite system there should be lower. You never want equipment in that crosstalk area, so to speak. You draw imaginary lines between the mid-range drivers across horizontally. You don't want any equipment interfering in that sort of cross energy talk system there. You want it clean. Keep the equipment low. Keep it off the ground, you know, or on the ground. A foot is good. Our platforms do that. That's what they're designed to do. They're designed to do that. So we want to make sure that we get that. Multiple channel system setup. Let's start with the top down. Let's start with the speakers at the ceiling. We don't see any kind of symmetry at all there. And one thing that we've come to realize in the last 17, 18 years, 
is if you're going to mess up, mess up equally on both the left and the right side of the room. And here we have everything shifted to the left side. And we have absolutely no treatment in the room at all. So the reverb times must be very high. And then to compound the problem, look at to the left side of the left channel. Looks like a sliding glass window or sliding glass door. That can't be a good situation, as we know that glass is, you know, a horrible surface. And we don't want to contribute to that situation. So I don't know really what's going on in this room. I, I never could figure it out. but. This is a situation that we definitely don't want. All right, let's look at another one here. So here we have it. Looks like a two-channel system, and we've got good, good setup. We're far enough away from the walls. It would be nice to be a little bit farther. But immediately, what are we shooting the energy from the speaker into? Glass walls. The whole rear of the room is glass. And then to compound the problem, the left channel sidewall is not solid. It's open. Now, I don't have photos of the right channel to see if it's the same. Hopefully it is. But if there's a door on the right sidewall, you know, this is a very, very bad problem. To have an open area left channel and then to have a wall on the right channel. And then holes in the room at the front between the speakers. Can be beneficial because they act as pressure release valves, but the bottom line here is you have to be very, very careful with your setup. But this room by itself with the glass walls in the back can't be a good situation. You know, sound takes on the characteristics of the surface areas that it strikes. If it strikes glass, you get glass sound, and that's such a horrible, brittle sound. Think of glass sound as nails across the blackboard. Remember when you were in school and the chalk would slip and the teacher's nails would go across the blackboard and that horrible sound. Well, that's what glass does to the situation. So you want to be very, very careful with your setup there. Another glass situation. You know, the rear of the room is all glass. There doesn't appear to be any kind of treatment at all in the situation. So once again, that rear wall reflection and, and the chair or the sofa is sitting next to the glass window there. So that's very problematic. And then look at the left and right of the listening position. The right side, <laughs> oh my, we have a glass cabinet which combines glass as a surface and a cabinet as a resonating chamber. So we want to be very, very careful with that also. Because remember, we have those three reflections in rooms that we have to be very cognizant of, primary, secondary, and tertiary. And then if you look at the, let's see, left channel, looks like we have an opening, a door possibly. And then the right channel is a solid glass surface again. An open wall on one side and a closed wall on another. This is a good example of phase. Because think about the reflections. If you're a reflection that's coming off the side walls and you have one side wall that's completely open, the time signature of those reflections on the open wall is going to be dramatically different than the time signature of the closed wall. And to compound the problem, it looks like we have a glass window on the right side there. So not a good situation at all. It would have been better to set this room up with the back wall that's open or the rear of the room. And that way we create a pressure release valve for low frequency pressures, and we reduce the impact of reflection. So that's something that we have to take into account.
doesn't look like there's much treatment in the room. Reverb times would be too high in this situation. Looks like it's an analog setup with albums on the front wall. So good example of a setup that's really not conducive to high resolution listening. So I think this is good for this video. We'll do some more. But this is part of our Don't Do This series, and we're using photos from our room forms that clients have set in to illustrate, you know, the proper setup. People make a lot of mistakes. Physics is difficult. I get it. But I think with a little common sense and putting ourselves in the position of our equipment, then we can kind of understand what we want to what objects we don't want in our way. And, and that would be a, a good thing to consider during the setup process. Hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. And if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to. So please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis. So that'll help you. Thank you.